for the very first time. Um, in India, the concept of mental and emotional health is just about to begin. We are hearing a lot about it now. And, um, you know, 12 years ago, when I became a, a professional life, life coach in India, it was an absolutely new concept where uh, mental and emotional health weren't talked about enough at that time. But thanks to the turning times now and uh, with the COVID times, emotional and mental health has come very big into picture uh, at the moment. And that's what my mission in life is to help everybody who's deep in crisis in life, who's going through a depressive or a sad phase of life to be able to understand your own light and to shine that light further into the world. That's what my mission is. Um, just to give you a little brief history about myself, uh, I, I've been, um, you know, I worked in the travel industry for eight, nine years, and I realized that it wasn't really enriching my life. I, I had a fantastic nine to five. I was earning good amount of money. A whole lot of respect was coming in. There was tons of contacts and everything was really, really nice. But then it wasn't soul satisfying. It wasn't enriching me as a human being. And I wasn't able to give back to the society the way I wanted to. And there came a moment in my life when, when um, I could leave my job and we moved to Bangalore. And that's when, when my real journey started uh, back in 2009, when uh, I had the opportunity to do what I wanted to. And that's when I started learning. I became a tarot reader. I became a life transformation coach, a hypnotherapist. And the journey continued and I'm still learning. And I think I'm a student for life. And that's, that's my biggest achievement that at, at no matter what age and stage you are in life, if you are a student, you're always growing and you're always enriching not just your own life and also for the people around you and the ones that you live with. So uh, this is what my journey has been. Uh, today, I, I wanted to um, talk about consciousness rising, which is a topic very, very dear to me. Uh, because as a coach and as a therapist, I see that playing out in all our lives on a daily basis. But we may not really understand what consciousness rising uh, really means and, and how does it relate to in our life. So let's look at it in, in a deeper perspective and understand what consciousness rising and it's a terminology we keep hearing, but uh, we don't really know what it really means. So um, if we all if you all just see in the last two, three years, when when COVID just come in, everything in our life just got disrupted, the way we lived, the way we thought, the way we behaved, and the way we were everything started changing. And we only started noticing these changes now. But not that these changes started happening only now, they were happening from 2012. When everybody predicted that the world may come to an end, it was actually not an end, it was a, it was a beginning of a new era. And what was this new era? In layman language, if I have to explain in simple Hindi, uh, it was a shift from Kalyuk to Satyuk, where a, a world of duality to a world of oneness. Humanity as a, as a whole is moving from one level of consciousness to a newer level of consciousness. How, what do you understand by the word Kalyuk? May I have a little bit of interaction in between because I like it like that and I think it's always best to have some uh, interaction in between as well. What is your understanding of Kalyug and what is your understanding of Satyug? If may I have an, uh, an answer from somebody? Any members? The influence of uh, Kali will be more in Kalyug, uh, uh, wherein the uh, respectness values will uh, come down. That's what the feeling. Whereas the Satya Yug is everything is truth speaking, going all, all the things. Absolutely right. You just said it everything word to word. What you said is exactly what we're experiencing at the moment. Now, in, in, in scientific terminology, if we use it, um, it is a shift from third dimensional world to a fifth dimensional world. Now, I'm not talking about the third world or the first world uh, reality. I'm talking about dimensions of consciousness, dimensions of reality. Okay. In third dimensional world, what we call as Kalyuk and the fifth dimensional word, 
we are right now in the transition phase of it. Okay? Now this transition phase may play out on all levels of our life. If, if in just in particularly the last uh, two and a half years that we've seen our lives changing from where to where. The first conversation when COVID hit, the first conversation we had was, this is now our new normal. And we now identify our lives as pre-COVID and post-COVID, right? The similar thing happened in 2012 when, when everybody predicted that the world may come to an end, but it was actually an end of an era. And we stepped into this golden age called Satyug. We are now in that ticking time period and it may complete in, the, in, in 2032. By then, Earth is going to transition even more. And we as human beings are transitioning on a daily basis. We are coping up with so much and with, with such new information and so much new technology available and such new ways of beings available, which we had never ever experienced earlier. Now consciousness rising in terms, how does it really impact our lives? In third dimensional world, we lived in a world of solidarity, in, in solidity, not solidarity, my mistake, uh, in solidity. Now, what does solidity really mean? Solidity was a world of separation, a world of duality, a world where, uh, where we operated from competition. And now we are transitioning into a phase where the world will now transit into a new, new earth, which will look like more cooperative, more supportive of each other, more oneness. If you see in the last uh, two decades, there is so much of spirituality that has spread out, which is a sign of Satyu coming in. And we as human beings are waking up to newer realities, which we were absolutely unaware of a couple of decades ago. Now, the shift from third dimensional to the fifth dimensional world is a huge, huge change. Of the ways we operated on in the third dimensional world are no longer applicable in this fifth dimensional world. It is absolutely like your phone going through uh, an upgrade of the operating system that was operational uh, before uh, this time came in is now no longer functional. And if we are trying to live our lives through those, uh, those, oper those operating systems, it's failing. The ways we did business, the ways we uh, uh, conducted our relationships, the ways we looked after our bodies or we did not look after our bodies are not any ways uh, you know, applicable in this in these times. We have to move and we have to mold and we have to shift. Now, the difficult part here is that we are now going through the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is neither third dimension nor fifth dimension. We haven't yet reached there. Fourth dimension is, is also called the dark night, where the soul is re-identifying itself to a new reality. Everything that we identified with in the third dimensional world, we cannot now identify with. Do you uh, identify yourself with what you were uh, pre-COVID? Can you resonate with the, the kind of person you were? I'm sure a lot of you would say no, because we've, we've really become new. Our energy is new, our feelings are new. The way we function are new. Now, the fourth dimension is a stage where purging happens. What is purging? Purging is a stage where you are releasing a lot out of your system. Your DNA is opening up. The DNA is actually 12 strands. But in the third dimension, we were operating only on two strands of DNA. Our DNAs are now opening up to a newer reality where newer strands are getting more activated. So a whole lot of information that we could not, that was available, but we could not comprehend earlier, we can now tap into that kind of consciousness. How many of you all have seen the movie Lucy? Has anybody seen the movie Lucy? Nobody? Yes, nobody. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes, you have. So yes. uh, if you remember in the movie Lucy, uh, she's basically induced a drug into her system, which then activates her DNA. 
human right. consciousness was earlier operating only on 4% of your intellectual capacity. Only 4%. Imagine what human beings have been operating only on 4%. Now those levels are increasing. Our comprehension, our understanding of this universe, our understanding of how the universe really functions and how human beings really function is now expanding. And we have the capacity to tap into more, more and bigger realities than we could ever see earlier. So human consciousness, our, not just our physical bodies are changing, our mind, our capacity to comprehend is also changing. Right in the stage of dark night of the soul. Uh, now, dark night of the soul is a very, uh, very dark term given to the fourth dimension, but it is basically releasing and shedding of all the old ways, all the old patterns, all the behavior patterns, all the emotional turmoils that we were carrying as emotional baggage. Everything is now at the moment coming up on the surface to get cleansed because to move into fifth dimension. You have to release this heaviness because this dimension is a, a dimension of more fluidity, more flexibility. Uh, it, it is so much more malleable than what we operated on in the third dimension. Now, if we have to really uh, give it a shape in our real life, it would be the way we did business in, in, in the third dimension. We had set ways, we had set patterns, we had uh, very, very fixed ways of doing business. But do you think your fixed ways of doing business are now functioning? How many of y'all are actually going through that phase where everything that you did pre-COVID is now not functioning or not giving you the kind of results that you were getting back then? Are we all experiencing that? Nobody? Yes, I've got it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, thank you very much. So uh, you see that we, and one thing we must learn from COVID itself, the way it is mutating and, and turning into a new variant every now and then for it to survive. We human beings also need to mutate and, and turn into newer and better versions of ourselves. And that's when ease will come into our lives. You know what? At the moment, nobody has a sense of what fifth dimension holds for us. All it requires us to be in the flow, to be accepting of the newer ways of being for all the changes that are coming into, uh, into play. And we must flow with it because the more resistance we are showing towards change, it is we who are suffering. It is our businesses that are suffering. It is our relationships that are suffering. It is our bodies that are suffering. I'll tell you my own experience. For two good years, I resisted COVID. I did whatever it took to resist it from coming to my house. All the precautions in the world that were possible, I did that. And just last week, me and my entire family had COVID. We've just recovered from it. And you know what my realization was? Of course, we've had, uh, you know, tremendous amount of uh, loss during uh, COVID times. We've lost our loved ones. We've lost our dear ones. We've lost businesses. We've lost money. We've lost so much. But then I realized after having COVID that it was basically an upgradation of my system that really happened. It transformed my DNA from the third dimension, progressing into fifth dimension. I wouldn't say we are, we are there yet, but we are progressing into it. And my understanding of it has really changed. Something that I was resisting for all this while really shifted my perspective. And I'm sure there's more growth that I will see and more bigger, better understanding I will I will now gain. Uh, I'm not trying to say that we all must invite COVID into our homes, not at all, God forbid. I, I really hope and pray you all stay in good health. But all I'm trying to say is that the nature is playing out in such a way. And we are trying to resist those changes. But resisting those changes are never going to contribute to us. Being in the flow and being malleable and being fluid in these times and walking ahead hand in hand with those changes are the times ahead. 
And that would also mean changing our ways of thinking towards how we treat our relationships and how we treat the people that we work with. We've played out enough with separative energies. Now is the time of conscious leadership and consciousness and conscious leadership to the level of being contributive to, to each other and not playing out of competition. Darwin 150 years ago said, uh, you know, give us a theory that nature exists on competition. And do you think it is now true? Because we've seen all of us standing up for each other during the COVID times, joining hands and doing, wanting to help each other and being there for each other to help in whichever way we could. In, in uh, the first lockdown and the second lockdown, I clearly remember we were there for our neighbors, for our community, for our people and whoever we could uh, you know, help in any uh, way and form. He did all of that. And that is the way forward by being contributive, by being supportive and being one in, in energy. Because you awaken and your light then spreads out to so many people around you and they then become beacons of light and they spread it out further. Now, why am I saying this and why is oneness so, so important for us as humanity? All the gurus and masters and guides that we have known, have we all know that they are in the 12th dimension already. They have crossed over all these levels of consciousness and they are standing at the, at the 12th level of dimension, waiting for all humanity to transcend through these levels. Okay, and until all of us collectively transcend and let go of these barriers and let go of the separative energies, consciousness and humanity cannot transcend beyond that. They cannot get into moksha and nirvana until we all transcend. So that's how important and integral it is for all of humanity to understand and have an understanding of why it is so important that we all must operate as one energy, as one consciousness. My endeavor here is only to bring this information to you all. And so that if some, some spark, you know, uh, ignites in, in, even in one person, my job is done. My only duty here as a light worker, I hold this responsibility to share this information and share this light forward. Yeah? And in these times, mental and emotional health has also played a big role in bringing about a huge amount of awareness. The, the aspects of life which we never paid attention to. Because our emotions and our mental health are the key to transcending to a better level of uh, consciousness. The first level of consciousness is all of the organic matter. The base level, the crystals, the sand, the gravel, the earth. Basically, all the raw material available for life is the first level of consciousness. The second level of consciousness, we moved from unicellular organism to multicellular organism. From there, we transcended it to the third dimension where we became human beings who had a, a brain to think and a heart to feel and living a level of consciousness. But it was all separative. It was all competitive. It was all you and me. We were never trained to think like one. Do you think any, anybody or even a, one single human being can exist in, in, uh, uh, as a solo human being? We cannot. Human consciousness is designed to operate like one consciousness. But in third dimensional, uh, in third dimension, we had no capacity to understand that all of us and humanity operates on, on one consciousness. We may have different uh, uh, ways of faith and different ways of connecting with the God consciousness, but we are all taught in all texts and all uh, uh, you know religions and all the ritual aspects also, we are all taught that God consciousness is one consciousness. And that is the ultimate goal that we all want to move forward to. Now, I'm not going to uh, get into spiritual aspect and philosophical aspect of it. I'm only talking about the science of life. And 
From third dimension, we've now reached the fourth dimension where we will have to transcend. We will have to let go of all our emotional baggages. We will all have to let go of our grudges, the pains, the emotional uh, uh, traumas that we carry from our childhood. We will have to let go of all of that to move into fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is the dimension of oneness, of kindness, of compassion, of feeling one, of being one. And this is not a place. It is not a place that you go to. It is a a state of being that you experience. Consciousness is a state of being that you experience. And when I say that we were living in the third dimension, it wasn't a place. It was a level of consciousness that we were experiencing. And what, what is consciousness? We've been talking about consciousness. What in your understanding is consciousness? May I have an answer here, please? If anybody can... Uh, Quickly, give me a, your understanding. Of consciousness, what? According, okay. co consciousness, according to me, is doing something with full knowledge of what you're doing or full, full, full awareness of what you're doing. Right. Right. That was a brilliant answer. Anyone else? Uh, a heightened level of awareness. Okay. Yes. Just being aware. Just being aware. Okay. Okay. So consciousness is knowing and being. Where does awareness come from? You are aware that something is happening. And awareness is the function of your mind. But consciousness is being. Right? So a level of consciousness is playing or behaving like you are it, you become that. Right? Can you? Excuse me, ma'am, there is some disturbance. Okay. Request everyone to please mute. Let me see who is that. I'll try to mute them. By the way, and Juneja. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Are we yeah. having Android I think, noise? I think now it's okay. You can continue. Do we have any background noise from my side? Now it's okay. I'll put these just for... Is it better now? Yes. All right. Thank you. So uh, consciousness is knowing and being. Can you, uh, can you experience love or can you know love or can you be love? Or are you aware of love? You can experience, ma'am. Yeah. Right. And can you be love? Yes. Yes. At times. Do you know what love feels like? Yes. And by choice, can you become love? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And by choice, you can become angry? Yes, ma'am. No. Sometimes without choice, also we become angry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we can also choose to operate on what level of consciousness we want to operate on. It is becoming that. Like how you can become love with your children, you can become love with your parents, you can become love with your family, you can become a level of consciousness that is kindness and compassion. And that's all that is the future of fifth dimension holds for us, a world that is full of kindness and compassion and love for each other and supportive of each other rather than playing out of competition Let's become an energy of contribution. And I think it is apt to have this con con conversation with all of you because I believe Rotary operates on this consciousness. Yes, you said it right. <laughs> so um, uh, in the context of uh, in the context of uh, what you have just now said, ma'am, a beautiful observation of uh, 
uh, his holiness sri sri ravi shankar comes to my mind and he said meditation is seeing the divine within yourself absolutely love is seeing the divine in the person next to you and wisdom is seeing the divine everywhere absolutely so beautifully so said that's how you know meditation takes you to that state of unconditional love love takes you to that state of wisdom and i think uh, uh, india has always stood for a wisdom based existence as distinguished from a wealth based existence and, and that I is our wealth is, and the pandemic is taking back to our roots absolutely truly truly in every which sense that we can experience it thank you very much for your sharing if you have any questions please go ahead now the floor is open for question and answers Uh, you have inculcated a very good thought process of moving from Kali Yuga to Satya Yuga, and we are in the transition phase of moving from Kali Yuga to Satya Yuga, which is a good thing that is happening. And you also stated that you resisted COVID for almost two years not to come into your house, and then now you feel that since you have got COVID, you have got upgradation, which is also good. A uh, good thought as well. Um, but my question is. now in this transition phase that is from now we are in 2022 and under the 10 years to go uh, according to you 2032 is the time when we actually fully move into the uh, satya yuga sector and i have been experiencing that yeah as you said people have started helping each other because i used to do business prior covid and i used to i'm doing business even but in those days everyone used to you know try to uh, looters or try to uh take advantage of us but now everyone is coming forward to help each other which is which is the aspect which is going on but during this transition period do you think people should step into some kind of activity which will actually make them conscious enough that that they're actually moving towards a good a good phase of life and that uh is a remembrance because even if you go into 2032 and still remember the past of 2012 uh before 2012 like in, in, in those days my grandmother did that or my uncle did that my auntie did that so the, even if you go if you go moving from this stage to another stage still that grudge and other things of the past lives are still keeping in your mind so is is there any phase that you can actually come out of it and uh, move towards the uh better way so you know uh, until 2012 <coughs> we had a choice you could distinctly see two categories of people one that were spiritually sleeping and the other that were awake right now the phase that mother earth is going through we are all passing through the tunnel of fourth dimension and heading towards fifth dimension at the moment the human consciousness pretty much doesn't have a choice we all have to cross this tunnel of clearing and cleansing our energy fields at the moment we really do not have a choice and people who there there will be tons of people that you see are now waking up waking up to a newer reality that they could not comprehend earlier now that you are saying that you know is there a way out yes there is a conscious way out as well and then there is a unconscious way as well where the nature is forcing us to get into looking deep inside us to clean up all the mess and all the heavy baggage that we've been holding on to for so long right now we do not have a choice all of mother earth has to transition and 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 the more people are waking up they are showing light to so many other people so if you woken up all that you can do at the moment is just shine your light you cannot go and try and tell people that you know what doing meditation is going to help you know what doing this course is going to help the more and more you try and do that sometimes you will see that the relationships will then resent you so it's no you know you it's no use doing that all you have to do is become that light you become a level of consciousness that is contributive and supportive of each other in you becoming that people around you and people in your life will get impacted yeah 
So all you can Absolutely. do is become the light. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. That answers my question. Good. Thank so, you. Uh, so the medicine that you are saying is the, I mean, uh, based on the understanding that I have, uh, the medicine now is the only meditation. Yes. To understand the consciousness and the super consciousness. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Self -real realization yeah. is a journey. I'm sorry. Who was this? This is Chandrakant. Ah, my name is Chandrakant. Yeah. He's our president-elect, Chandrakant, Rotarian Chandrakant. Ah, how wonderful! I know. Yeah. yeah. So I am okay. a disciple of Daji. I, uh, I I just know him, but I'm, I'm hesitant to go and listen to all his stories. But but uh, he always tells that meditation is the only only thing that needs to only get medication out of today. Your, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's you true. Every day, every day. <laughs> you know, um, for beginners, yes, you have to do every day until yeah. you become meditation yourself. Everything is about becoming. Oh, becoming, okay. You know, you I think, become... man, one has to one has to take the traverse the journey from medication to meditation. Absolutely, absolutely right. I think Swami Vivekananda also told it's a notion of uh, subconscious understanding the subconscious consciousness of and uh, super consciousness. I think yeah. Uh, truly, truly yes. Yeah. Einstein said, "If you want to understand the world, talk in terms of energy and frequency, and that's what it is today." Great. Yes, please. Any more questions? No, it was really nice to hear all the positive way you have looked at the happenings around us. Uh, it's, I was enjoying it. It's really good. Bye -bye. And, Thank you very much. Uh, we had a lot of confirmation. We, we ourselves got a lot of changes during this period. Yes. Towards the good. Say the, the Zoom meeting itself is uh, the result of that. See, we are all supposed to come. To we've all, we've yeah. all upgraded. Yeah, we are all upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yeah, hi, Madhvi ma'am. Hi, Pratibha. Hi, Pratibha. Yeah. Uh, you gave a very positive feel to the whole thing and gave us a new perspective, actually, which we never thought of. We, we were just thinking we were going down. But the way you explained it, and the, it's actually opened our eyes and our thought process in a different way altogether. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. And, and that's really, really nice of you. Thank you. Any more wants to interact with her? Uh, just wanted to check if yeah. we need to, you know, get in touch with you or probably take a little more advice or help from you. How do we do that? Yes, yes. I That's think, uh, Valmiki ji, you can share my contact details. Uh, <laughs> okay. You, I'm going to put it in the chat uh, message, uh, Madhvi ji's contact. Uh, feel free to contact her even after the you know event. Sure, anytime, anytime. Yeah. I'll be happy to help. And if anybody is going through the confusing phase where you're not able to understand what is really happening spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, please feel free to reach out. Great, great. Thank you. So I, I would suggest to put it in the group uh, because... Uh, some people might be able to copy from the chat and some people might not. Sure, I'll do both, sir. I'll do both. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think there are no more questions. So thank you so much for having me here today, Valmiki ji. This was absolutely a pleasure sharing this platform with all of you. And you all have been great audience and so supportive. Thank you so much. I'm really, really grateful for this experience. I We all must thank you uh, for uh, sending such a positive aura uh, and uh, not necessary that we need to meet the physical. We have utilized the best of the technology available. So the, the positiveness, you know, it's not necessary that one can meet and uh, exchange. It can be sent through a telephone or through a, a Zoom call, but definitely you have created that aura to all of us. Thank you once again. In one call, you accepted immediately my request and uh, today you could be able to send so much of uh, energy uh, to all our Rotarians. Uh, we strongly believe uh, being Rotarian itself, you know, the love, they feel the love, they share the love because uh, 
uh, we be, we believe in helping uh, you know others with consciousness and uh, definitely we feel blessed at the end of the day because it's all if after all a boomerang the more you do yes. that that it comes back abundance way you know uh, and uh, meditation yes uh, uh, is the new mantra and the whole world is uh, running behind uh, health wellness and immunity boosting so we 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 recharge our batteries we recharge we put the fuel in the car we do everything but we never recharge ourselves so which you revealed the uh, is a known fact but we still neglect but you revealed it today so nicely that the meditation is the only way as our pdg says if you want to avoid medication better go for a meditation and the station is within yourself <laughs> that's really nice and i would like to request our pdg suresh if you can uh, uh sum it up <coughs> thank you uh, president valmiki and uh, i must thank uh, madhavi ma'am for being with us uh, particularly in the immediate aftermath of uh, her recovery from uh, the covid uh, infection uh, it's so wonderful that uh, you could spare time and uh, be with all of us uh, madhavi ma'am this evening <coughs> i think you spoke about the eternities and uh, i think the pandemic has been in more ways than one a wake up call for um, uh, humanity as it were uh, the message not to take things for granted the message that uh, man should not live in the false notion that uh, he is a master of the world and uh, he can uh, you know dictate terms to nature and then lead a life as he wants i think all these ideas have been blown to smithereens and a healthy respect for nature uh, is i think one uh, uh, certain fallout of this pandemic and uh, respecting nature understanding that we are we ourselves each one of us is made of the five elements of nature and therefore we are a part of nature as it were and then to distort or disturb the balance which nature essentially represents would be at our own peril i think that is what the pandemic has taught us and uh, and therefore uh, i think your talk has been uh, a very a very timely wake up call that we have to go back to our eternities values in fact mother teresa said love is the absence of judgment i think she gave us a beautiful definition of the word love in a single line when she said love is the absence of judgment and then your love is unconditional and you you actually you become an exemplar of love you don't even make an effort to love you are love yourself you know you are like a beautiful rose in a winter morning on your lawn and that rose emanates freshness it emanates fragrance and it gives that fragrance to each and every person without any kind of distinction whatsoever and that is the kind of unconditional love which in turn graduates into compassion compassion somebody said is the unconditional flowering of love and when that happens you yourself become an exemplar of nature and uh, that is the sure way to erase the ego and uh, erasing the ego <clears throat> is the way uh, to get into true meditation and one has to realize in meditation you you don't have to make any effort you just have to drop you just you just have to be valmiki said the world is running after meditation that is the wrong thing which the world is doing because in meditation you don't have to run anywhere from mind you have to become no mind you have to drop the mind you have to drop the ego and then you will discover the innumerable vistas which are available to you i think madhavi ma'am has uh, set us on this path in fact when she was talking about love i was reminded of one of my favorite quotes of the french philosopher pierre de chardin pierre de chardin said some day 
after we have mastered the winds the waves the tides and gravity we shall harness for god the energies of love that day for the second time in the history of the world man would have discovered fire so here shardan you know he love is indefinable man was asking us how would you define love what is love and so on you know love cannot be defined just as the breeze cannot be defined just as you know uh, the rains cannot be described what do you mean when you have something sweet how do you describe that sweetness you cannot same way we cannot define or describe love we can only feel love we can only experience love and that is that would set us on the right path to discovering ourselves i think i'm taking too much time i'm <laughs> but i would like to uh, thank madhavi ma'am for uh, you know such a such a pleasant evening where you have motivated i think each one of us to turn the search light inwards uh, thank you very much and god bless thank you so much so thank you so much uh, pdg suresh garu for uh, well articulated and uh, that's a wonderful word of thanks also for her uh, and uh, thank you so much once again uh, madhavi ji and uh, we would like to continue for few minutes uh, with our uh, club uh, uh, reports and uh, we will be in touch with you and i have shared your contact to our rotarians so you may get some you know calls or mails from rotarians so kindly attend them and see what best you can heal them further i would love to hear from all of you thank you very much it's been an absolute honor being here great thank you and i wish you all great health stay safe and stay healthy thank you thank you so thank much thank you bye bye everyone thanks a lot bye. thanks a lot and we have some uh, uh, announcements uh, from the club level uh, club side um, i would like to just read out the birthdays uh, in the month of february uh, uh, we have got uh, dr rotarian dr sudeep is celebrating his birthday on 13th february uh, we have rotarian sushil jenery wall the oldest senior rotarian 20th february he'll be celebrating his birthday we have uh, our club admin director rotarian anusha munigala celebrating her birthday on 22nd february we have gauri lakshmi narayana the senior rotarian celebrating his birthday on 24th february and i have some more announcements on 5th february district governor uh, prabhakar gaur wants to interact uh, with uh, all the members of rotary club of secunderabad so i would like to once again remind you and uh, the district secretariat has uh, created <coughs> login we will share the link once again so kindly uh, avail be available uh, this is not a district governor visit which is uh, also due for us uh, but this is uh, just an interactive session that uh, dg wants to uh, talk to the members so it is a one hour session Uh, especially the new members all please be available on that day and uh, know your dg and we will learn from him and he may guide us further how we can uh, still uh, you know do uh, projects or other activities during this pandemic period so apart from this i would like to also once again uh, uh, remind you all there are two important events uh, in the district level one is our district uh, conference in the name and style of jalsa which is scheduled uh, uh in in the month of february uh, uh so you need to all uh, get registered for uh, jalsa it is scheduled on 26th and the 27th of february this is a district conference especially the new rotarians uh, for your benefit i would like to once again tell what is district conference district conference is an annual event hosted by the district governor and uh, that's where uh, uh, you know uh, the next uh, leadership also will be taking over before the next leadership takes over the district uh, uh, conference they also recognize the awards and rewards to the uh, the club level and the rotarians uh, they will be recognized and it is a definitely fun event at the same time we can learn more about rotary so i would like to request every rotarian kindly get registered and the host club is rotary club of hyderabad deccan so more information feel free to contact me or rotarian uh, uh, kalyani or club secretary will be more than happy to help you all and we have another important event which i would like to share uh, uh, the first time in hyderabad happening uh, rotary international 
presidential conference. Normally, the, the Rotary International Conference happens worldwide in few places. Uh, so Hyderabad has been identified. So we are all fortunate uh, to receive the delegates from all over the world. They will be coming to Hyderabad and they are going to be here for uh, two nights, three days. It's a wonderful celebration. So I would like to also request you all to kindly get yourself registered uh, for the Rotary International Presidential Conference. So this, uh, this comes in, very rarely this occasion comes. Of course, district uh, conferences comes yearly once. So I would like to request everyone uh, to make sure that you all get registered and uh, know more about Rotary. Uh, because of this pandemic time, we are not able to meet in person. And many new Rotarians who joined on my request uh, are also puzzled uh, what's happening because they are not getting a chance to interact with the senior Rotarians. They are not able to learn. They are not able to participate on the projects. So, but definitely it is going to come for an end, either good or bad. It has to come for an end. Now the time has come. So I am sure before my presidential year gets uh, ended, we will have some physical meets and some physical uh, projects uh, uh, which are uh, under execution. We will be uh, you know, letting you all know my only request to you all is whenever there is a uh, uh, you know uh, invitation or a call, uh, uh, the, the more we get a positive response from the members, so we know it is an encouragement for us to undertake more such kind of activities. So let's all uh, join together and make sure that Rotary Club of Sikindrabad is flourishing very well. And another good news is Rotary Club of Sikindrabad has entered into Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, thrown by the uh, RI World President uh, for the membership development. Our club is standing there in the list. There are five clubs have been recognized in the district. We are one of them. That's another you know, uh, good news we'd like to share with you all. And uh, definitely there are many more things we all can do. And another good news is we have also identified our next leadership uh, for the 22-23. Uh, we have got uh, President-elect uh, 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 Chandrakant Munigala and we have secretary elect uh, um, uh, Vignesh, uh, Rotarian Vignesh and followed by the uh, you know, team which we have already shared with you all. So they will be gearing up uh, very shortly. So we have, under, we have identified one um, service project with uh, our uh, school Mehbubiya uh, where uh, we have received one quotation waiting for another quotation so that we'll take a call and we will be starting uh, a dining uh, hall uh, for the girl children uh, for a midday meal. They're sitting on the uh, you know, floor and eating for the meal. So we are trying to build a, a dining hall for them. So soon after I get the second coat, uh, we will circulate to you all and we will take a call. And uh, I have also received another request from uh, Rotarian PV Ravi Kumar. He has identified one, uh, 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 one uh, de destitute woman who's looking for self-employment. Uh, so she wanted us to buy a sewing machine, uh, which is the advanced one, uh, where uh, it is costing about to 20,000 and odd. So I'm circulating that officially in our mail, our uh, WhatsApp group and Ravi Kumar has come forward to donate half of the uh, value of the machine. So remaining 10,000, we may have to raise from members. If anybody is interested, uh, they're most welcome so that uh, we will be gifting the uh, life and hope to this destitute woman has been identified by our own Rotarian. So with that, uh, uh, friends, uh, thank you so much once again. I would like to once again thank Rotary Club of Sampradaya uh, for uh, accepting and joining as a co-host. And there are some Rotarians, my good friends, uh, uh, they have also joined uh, from other clubs from Twin Cities. Thank you one and all with your uh, presence. It is a motivation and encouragement for us to do more of such events. And I am sure uh, this positive aura will be with us uh, uh, for a longer period. And definitely we will start uh, learning uh, the meditation. Those who are already know meditation will start uh, practicing meditation. And we will definitely be the, the finest souls with our meditation skills and continue to do good in the world. So that ends for the uh, uh, event for the day. I would like to adjourn the meet. Now another five, 10 minutes, the uh, room is open for anybody wants to have a friendship, fellowship, uh, feel free to share. Ramana Garu. Yes, uh, Valmiki Garu. Yes, yes, thanks, thanks for making it.
No, it's, it's our pleasure always. Why don't you just tell our members about the activities, what you're doing with uh, uh, the, the, the music loving Rotarians and the membership so that uh, many members are interested. Even we have good singers in our club. Our oh, PDG Suresh true. itself is a good singer. You know that? I know very much. I tried to contact him <laughs> quite a number of times, ah, okay, but okay. Uh, couldn't reach to him. Okay, uh, okay. So basically, this uh, uh, music thing is called IFRM. IFRM is the International Fellowship of Rotarian Musicians. So this is a platform open to all the Rotarians, Rotarians, their families and Rotractors and others, and even to non-Rotarians, those who are music lovers or those who are moderate singers also. So there is no you know, base level to select the membership. Anybody can join this. So the, we will be meeting every month. Every month there will be a 